Hello, it's me, Nero. And um, a little heads up. Um, the These playthroughs of Nairs will not be narrated by me. So you're like, oh my god, why is he not narrating this? Who's going to be narrating it? Well, my friends Omar and Bear will be narrating them for you. And the reason is because they just wanted to do it. So, you know, yeah, I let them do it and they wanted to put it on the channel. So, you know, there. And obviously, if any other visual novel comes out around the same time when these videos are going up, I will record them, but they will go up after Neris. So, yeah, you know, just don't worry. Any of your favorite visual novels, you know, that are updated around this time will be recorded. They just won't go up until later. Okay. So anyways, without further ado, let's begin the video and give a round of applause for Omar and Bear. Hello, everyone. Hello. I am Omar. And I am Bear, or Bear Groove. Mm -hmm. And this time we'll be doing something a little different on the channel. <laughs> you see, <laughs> Nero allowed us to record a visual novel for you. So yeah, <laughs> this visual novel is Nero's. It's one I read a while ago while only the prologue was out. I told Nero, hey, you should record this one. And Nero said, you do it. And I said, okay. So with Bear, we start the recording, just the prologue, to see if you guys like it. And if you do, well, remember to comment and tell us if you would like to keep us going. And besides that, uh, I think you should pay attention to this visual novel because it is written as a mystery. And as you will see in the prologue, it is stated that the difficulty of the mystery is pretty high. But uh, we should begin uh, reading it to you guys. But one thing we have to say is that pay attention to the details. And I hope you enjoy it and listening to me and to Omar. Once again, thank you, Nero, for letting us record this in your channel. So, without further ado, let's get started. Pewo! The Purple Manor. The first and last move. Shax is a young shapeshifter who committed some mistakes. As compensation for his crimes, he is sent to serve as a warper under the wing of Nero Magnus, a great shapeshifter. But as his relationship with Nairos gets stronger, and strange events start creeping into his new life, Shax comes to a realization about himself. Difficulty? Merciless. For a beginner, this is nothing but a one-sided assault. This story is merely a memory from the faraway past. Any resemblance to existing people, organizations, locations or events is merely coincidental. Leaves and branches broke under my bare feet as I walked deeper into the dark forest. A small chill ran down my spine as the cold, but gentle wind nudged me forward. The darkness that enveloped me seemed to expand endlessly. I had lost track of how long ago I reached the edge of the forest and decided to dive into its depths. However, that didn't bother me, for I knew I would arrive at my destination sooner or later. I wasn't in a hurry. If that was the case, I would have warped there. As a matter of fact, I had decided to make my way there on foot for some additional time for myself, to prepare for what was coming. I had gotten myself into quite a predicament back then, and so I got summoned by my great shapeshifter in order to discuss how I would make amends. Although, considering my abilities, and that they had asked me to bring some clothes and other everyday life items, I could make a good guess as to what my punishment would be. If I was right, they would mean things weren't going to be too bad. But that knowledge hardly prevented a knot from forming in my throat. A foreboding feeling that what awaited me would be much worse than what I was anticipating loomed over me. To make matters worse, I kept recalling the scene that had taken place in my room but a few hours ago. After that, I would have preferred to run away. Perhaps to hide for a while or even look for a new place to call home. Unfortunately, not turning myself in wasn't an option. Refusing to meet with a great shapeshifter when summoned would only make my situation dire. And if the shapeshifters chose to shun and abandon me as a result, 
then who will take me in? There was no place in the world for us that wasn't with our own kin. I knew that well. Hmm. Huh, about as fancy as I expected. Although, it is a bit smaller. Once I drew close to the end of the forest, I was greeted by the sight of a tall building, its wall covered by thick vines. Through the plant life, a few windows could be seen. However, it was too dark for me to make out anything inside. Can't say I appreciate how useless that place makes my night vision feel. Why does he have to be staying at such a gloomy place? I didn't see any doors, so I proceeded to walk my way around the mansion in order to find the entrance. It didn't take me long to arrive at what seemed to be the front entrance. There, I saw a fellow shapeshifter standing by the door. He had a peculiar appearance. His bald head was covered in yellow, worn scales. Pointy crooked teeth stuck out from his mouth, and he had small but bulbous brown eyes. His fancy black uniform, as well as the solemn look in his eyes, made it evident he was a servant of the house. He had been waiting for me, I assumed. I cleared my throat and approached him. As soon as he saw me, those pointy teeth disappeared back into his mouth. Excuse me. This is the residence of Nero Magnus, yes? Indeed. We have been expecting you, Lord Shax. Would you like me to carry your luggage? Yes, here you go. Good. The master is currently working. I will take your luggage to your new quarters and inform him of your arrival afterward. But first, allow me to guide you to the parlor, where you may wait for him. New quarters, huh? Of course, lead the way. We entered the mansion, stepping into a long, dark hallway. We walked until we reached a tall door to our right, near the end of the corridor. He opened the door, revealing a grand room decorated with expensive-looking furniture and walls with intricate designs made in a shiny metal. Go in, please. Now, if you excuse me... The servant left me alone in the, to be frank, somewhat eerie parlor. But it wasn't just that room. Pretty much the entire place was very dimly lit, giving it a ghastly vibe. After a few seconds of just standing there, looking somewhat dumb, I decided to make myself comfortable on one of the nearby sofas. First thing I took notice of, as I climbed onto it, was how big the sofa and everything else inside of the house was. It wasn't surprising. It was known Nero's was a huge man, even at his smallest size. I had only ever seen him in video footage of this point, but even there he stood out because of his height alone. But still, seeing firsthand the place where he lived, as well as the size of the furniture he used, made me realize I hadn't grasped just how huge he was. And it wasn't long before the man himself showed up. The door swung open, and from the other side, an immense shadow with four piercing red eyes emerged, but I didn't see them as eyes, no. What I perceived were four rings of unnaturally colored fire, floating and shining upon otherwise empty pits. I must confess, the sight was so intimidating that my body sank further into the sofa on its own. It was an inappropriate reaction. However, as the silhouette stepped deeper into the room, the shadows vanished to reveal the abundant, pale fur under, as well as a fancy black and red suit. His full appearance was quite the sight to behold in person. It paralyzed me, now not out of fear, but admiration. Maybe this aura of grandness was what allowed him to get so popular among those acquainted with him, I thought. You must be Shax. I welcome you to my humble dwelling. His voice was deep, strong, and it carried a regal feeling with it. Y y yeah. Nero's blinked, but remained still otherwise. He was waiting for me to do something, much to my confusion. It would seem that, in my awe for his gigantic visage, I had forgotten my manners. As soon as I realized my mistake, I jumped from the sofa, 
landing on the floor on one knee. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for having me. Great shape shifter. I then broke one hand to my chest and bowed deeply. Nero sighed as if exasperated by my greeting and signaled me to get back to my seat. He sat on the sofa across the room from mine. Although a bit disheartened by his whole attitude, I obeyed his command. You understand you have been causing trouble for your family. A bad look for them, but especially for yourself, considering the role they have come to fill. I heard you even managed to get the angels involved. Y yes. Now, to be frank, sir, things got out of hand. It wasn't my intention for my pranks to go this far. Nero's paused, listening to me. Then, without doing as much as changing his expression, he continued speaking. I imagine that was the case. One will need to be a fool to intentionally attract the angels to his fellow shapeshifters. Nevertheless, it being an accident does not make the situation any less severe. Yes, you are right. No. We aren't here to discuss your transgressions. The investigation regarding this has already concluded. Let us get to the point. Despite you putting it to a mischievous use, it came to my attention you are fairly skilled at warping magic, correct? The soon change his topic made me raise an eyebrow, but I soon figured what he was getting at. It seemed my hunch had been spot on, despite my worries. I felt waves of relief washing over me, but I tried not to let it show. Yes, that's right. Yours is a rare, yet highly demanded magic. Normally, we will settle this in a different manner, but given the circumstances, I decided it will be convenient to allow you to train your abilities. In a more constructive manner, that is. Under my surveillance. Hmm. Is that so? But surely you have a warper here already? Or will they act as my teacher? I do not want you to think I am taking advantage of the situation, but it is quite convenient you arrived here at this time. Our warper became indisposed not long ago. But let us not stray from the main topic. I am short on time at the moment. Okay, I understand. No, be warned. You shall not be given special treatment. Underperform or commit buffoonery again, and I will be forced to give you a more severe punishment. What you did in the long run will not be more than a temporary setback for your family. However, that does not mean us shapeshifters should tolerate such mischief. Yes, I understand. Thank you for allowing me to serve you, despite what I have done. I bowed my head deeply once again. Yes, I see you are an honest kid. Keep calm, listen to what you are told to do, and you will be alright. At that moment, there was a warmth in Nils' words that contrasted with the rest of his strict ice-cold persona. I didn't know what to make of it back then, but... I was hoping to ask you a few questions, but that will have to wait until another occasion. For now, feel free to make sure everything is in order with your bed chamber. Go up the stairs and enter the second door to the right. Yes. Thank you so much for your hospitality. I jumped off the sofa and started making my way out of the parlor. But when I arrived at the door, I stopped in my tracks and turned around, setting my gaze upon the great shapeshifter a few steps behind me. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, sir? Yes? Mm, uh, no, nothing. It was a dumb question. Oh. Wouldn't be good to say something, uh, buffoony enough to earn me a worse punishment on my very first day here, now would it? I cringe inside at my miserable attempt at comedy, but I tried my best to give him a smile regardless. Nero's looked straight at me. At first, it seemed like he wouldn't react at all, but after a few seconds, <laughs> he let out an amused puff. I imagine I must have looked quite surprised and awkward. Had he found that funny? Or was he just trying to be kind? Anyhow, 
Figuring I shouldn't take more of his time, I decided to take the fact that he even reacted in a not negative manner as a victory. I smiled, this time genuinely, and then excused myself from the parlor, sending off to my new room. My bedchamber counted with a king-sized bed, a mirror, a couple of drawers, and even a small bathroom. However, the first thing that caught my attention was my suitcase resting on the bed. When I opened it, I noticed a servant from earlier had gone through the trouble of moving my clothes to the closet. It was empty, except for a few other belongings. For the time being, I opted to close the suitcase and lower it to the floor so I could lie down on the bed. The last few hours had been rather intense. I craved for a bit of respite. It crossed my mind that I was taking the prospect of having my freedom taken away, as well being forced to serve someone else, a bit too likely. But I suppose, in a way, I had accomplished what I wanted. I didn't care if I had merely moved from one cage to another. Being away from that house, performing a different job, was enough for me. Besides, Nero seems to be as much of an amicable person as I had heard. Cold, but compassionate on the needle, although perhaps he was acting in his own best interest. The expansion of the shapeshifters reach depended on the recruitment of new warpers. So it would be logical if he had taken advantage of the circumstances to make me work for him. Uh, no, to be honest, that is exactly what had happened. Maybe his former personal warper wasn't even indisposed, as he affirmed but had been transferred off in preparation for my arrival. But even so, the fact that things had turned out this way was like a blessing to me. Especially after being so scared earlier, I believed that he would take good care of me. I felt someone nudging me awake, and once I opened my eyes, I saw the servant blurry figure standing over me. My apologies for interrupting your sleep, Lord Jax. But the master requests your presence in his study. Of course. Okay, I'll be there right away. Just give me a moment to wake up. The servant bowed and excused himself out of the room. I rolled my eyes until my vision regained clarity. Then I got up and threw my arms up, stretching until the weight in my limbs melt off. I walked up to the mirror to check my clothes weren't too wrinkled. Since they seemed to be alright, I exited into the hallway. The servant was waiting for me there. I followed him to Nero's study. I apologize for keeping you waiting, master. Lord Shax was taking a nap. The servant said as soon as we entered the room. <laughs> it took all my might resisting the impulse to give him a furious glare. Nero's had been reading the letter, but upon seeing us come in, he returned it to its envelope and put it away in one of the desk's drawers. Mm. Thank you, Sebos. You are dismissed. The servant, Sebos, bowed to his master and exited the study. Nero's gestured to me to take a seat in front of him. It is worth noting that Nero's study was as ghastly as cold as the rest of the house. At that point, I started wondering if, by any chance, prolonged Exposure to light made his eyes hurt. Well, Shax, I wish to ask you a few questions and give you a quick rundown on the job you will be doing here. Okay. The first question concerns the incident you caused. Oh? Consider this a personal question, but I am curious about what possessed you to do such thing. According to your confession, your distaste for your family's work was your motivation, but I find it hard to believe that was the sole factor. No, that's really all there was to it. I asserted, looking him in the eyes. I felt his gaze pierce me like four daggers, scanning for something hidden. I had to fight the impulse to look away. But... What he said next was... I see. Very well. Moving on. About your magic. I understand it is not simple teleportation ability, yes? Oh, um, that's right. It is a bit more specific than that. 
what I can do is switch the position of two objects of roughly the same size. I figure you ask because you plan to have me deliver letters, packages, and such. If you are concerned this limitation will get in the way, don't worry. I can switch places with some other object at the destination, deliver whatever you want me to, and switch back. It shouldn't be a problem. Good to know. Just make sure to never teleport directly inside your destination, but somewhere nearby. This is advice I give to all warpers, and considering you my quirks, it is especially relevant for you. You do not want to startle anyone, or get confused for a thief. Uh, yes, good point. Now then. Nirus proceeded to talk about the worlds I will be visiting, as well about the proper etiquette when interacting with the shapeshifters that will receive me. He also told me I will need to accompany him to any meeting or speech he attended to, since I will be his main means of transportation. He gesticulated with his hand the entire time during the explanation. That much was normal, but now that I was closer to him, I realized there was something... off about it. A glance at him was enough to tell there should be considerable strength and weight behind his movements. Yet, he handled himself with such gentleness and grace that every time he lets his hands fall on the desk or touch something, it didn't feel any different to if I had done it instead. It was as if I was speaking with someone not much bigger than me, despite him being nearly doubling me in height. Obviously, he shouldn't go around smashing everything in his path, but with all due respect, all this strength struck me as unnatural. I couldn't help but wonder how long it took him to attain that level of control. Shax. Shax. Are you listening? No, oh, I'm sorry. I was sunning out. We will have to do something about that. Several high-ranking shapeshifters and grey shapeshifters will take offense if you sun out when addressed to them. Uh. That should be about everything. Do you have any questions? Um, so, about the etiquette thing, it sounds complicated. So I'll need help to get it down. Will you help me practice? I say it with a smile. If you need a lesson in etiquette, usually it is Sabos who handles that. I see. I will have jobs for you before long. I recommend you go look for him post-haste. Understood. If that's everything, then I'll be on my way, sir. Thank you for everything. Now, if you'll excuse me... Yes. Take care. Hmm. Huh. How curious. Once the door clicked close, I opened the drawer once more. The first thing that came into sight was the letter I had been reading before Shax and Sebos showed up. The letter had been delivered by another warper a few hours ago. It was from Shaq's father. He seemed worried sick that his son would attempt to cause a ruckus here as well, and he asked me to be comprehensive, to keep an eye on him, another request of that nature. To me, it looked as if he was trying to save face, though. However, he did mention something interesting. I moved the letter aside and dug through the other documents until I found an older folder near the bottom. I took it out and opened it. It was a report concerning the soul amnesia cases. Now, since this was an issue that only affected us shapeshifters, I assume most people will require an explanation as to what this soul amnesia was. It was a condition discovered shortly after the Battle of Ion, around 200 years ago at this time. It was not some sort of virus, nor contagious disease, but a beard condition. A corporeal being's self has two components, their soul and their accidents, their essence and their matter. What's eternal and what's temporary? But healthy shapeshifters and angels too have the ability to violate this principle. In addition to being on aging, we were able to keep our accidents in the event our bodies were destroyed. Thanks to this, we were able to survive as souls and gather power to regenerate our bodies. This was the power of remembrance. 
it wouldn't have been an exaggeration to call us immortal. However, the soul amnesia changed all of this. There started surfacing cases of shapeshifters who found themselves unable to regenerate, or rather, whose souls had lost the capacity to remember their accidents. The amnesiac souls acted like mortal souls, looking for new bodies to inhabit, to be reborn with no memories or sense of who they once were. The first generation of soul amnesiacs grew older and died of old age as well. Until then, the concept of us being affected by the passage of time had been unthinkable. Would the illness eventually stop manifesting this way, leaving only the forgetting symptom? This is what we call the second generation of soul amnesiacs. In his letter, Shaq's father had confessed to me that his son belonged to this second generation. I did not understand the petty squabbles between high-ranking shapeshifters, but I suspect he had decided to hide that detail in order to avoid some kind of perceived humiliation. Since his son was now under my care, he must have felt pressed to tell me so I will not find out oh, the hard way in the event tragedy befell Shax. I found it ridiculous, to be honest. I assume Shax was made to hide it as well. I shall request he is added to the records next time I send him back to Nomino. Also, it will be wise to consult with the doctor that examined him first. I will have to write back to his father to ask for more information. I put the folder back in its place, closed the drawer and opened a different one to retrieve an envelope and a blank piece of paper. Then, I grabbed my pen and started writing. Still, this does not answer any of my questions. Well, Shax will be living here from now on. There will be plenty of time to learn about him, and for him to tell me whatever else he is hiding. He does not seem as conceited as the most obnoxious novel so far. Perhaps I could ask him directly, but for now, let us wait and see what happens. After I wrote the letter and put it alongside all the correspondence Shax will deliver in the following days, I went back to work. For hours, the forms and documents were all my eyes paid attention to. From this study, I commanded the hundreds of novels under my jurisdiction. They, in change, will send me reports regarding the gathering of material resources or the harvesting gnosis. Every day, I will go over the paperwork and sign it, after which I will send it to Nomino. Then, I will decide how to allocate the resources we have and send the orders to the novels, who will then mobilize their legions accordingly. Writing a few papers was all I needed to dictate in which direction the web of purification will expand next. I was a spider, weaving the strings that would capture the soiled souls of mortals. This task required planning, of course, but the way I executed it was almost primal. Read, assess, command. Day after day, hour after hour. I would automatically carry these three actions in an endless loop. A clock doesn't think as it points at the same succession of numbers endlessly, and neither did I. This should be enough for today. The clock's arrows marked an hour left before supper by the time I decided to wrap things up and go outside to the front garden. I was watering my white flowers when I heard someone approaching. It looked like shacks and sebos had still been practicing on the back. The small shapeshifter let out a surprised exclamation when he saw me here. Oh, hello again, sir. Greetings. I nodded in their direction. Sebo spoke to me and then turned to Shax. Make sure to be at the dining hall in an hour, Lord Shax. Sure. Sebo walked into the mansion, but Shax stayed behind. It didn't take long for him to become captivated by the flowers. Do you take care of the garden by yourself, sir? Most of the time, yes. Sebos helped me very occasionally. I wasn't aware you could grow this kind of plant in complete darkness. 
How do you do it? There are ways. Shax clearly wanted to make small talk, but I didn't know what to say. I was driving my blank. That was all I could get to come out. A bit later, I managed to catch an idea in the sea of my consciousness. It was such a simple question that I felt embarrassed for taking so long to come up with. Is there any flower that got your attention? Shax broke the finger to his chin, and he looked down at the flowers. To be more specific, he was looking at the ones with the white glow. I was certain he would say those were his favorites, but then he looked at the other side and pointed at the roses. Call me simple-minded, but I like those. Oh, I see. The feathered reptile looked at me and then tilted his head, his tongue briefly sticking out of his mouth. Huh? I assume the white ones are your favorites. Oh. Um, yes. They are very pretty. Silence settled in shortly after. I tried to come up with something else to say, but to no avail. Shax still stayed for a few more minutes before saying he would go lie down until supper was ready. Feeling a bit hesitant, I nodded, and then he went his way. What is wrong with me? I finished with the garden just in time for supper. I put the watering can down, washed and dried my hands with a handkerchief, and walked into the mansion. I sat on the end table and Shax decided to sit to my left. Although he shot me a glance every once in a while, he remained silent throughout supper. The first one to finish was me, but I waited for Sebos to come to the kitchen and collect the dishes before telling him and Shax to have a good night. Oh, okay. Good night. Sleep well, master. I took off all my clothes before laying down on the bed, staring at the ceiling for a moment before I closed my eyes. Tomorrow, this day will start anew, like it already had countless times. But what I did not know was that this cycle wouldn't last much longer. The following days were pretty rough. On paper, having Sebos teach me etiquette sounded simple, but it turned out there were quite a lot of rules. I remember every once in a while, a shapeshifter courier would come home to deliver something for my family. They would always conduct themselves with exaggerated elegance as if their every movement was part of a play script. I guess that description turned out to be quite apt. It wasn't the kind of thing you could learn with just a few hours of practice, but Sebos kept encouraging me. He reassured me that even if I didn't have all of it down by the time of my first job, going in with a bit of practice was preferable to going in blind. I couldn't argue against that. No, no, Lord Shax. Your poster was off. Let us start over. Uh, by the way, Sebos... Uh, why do you keep calling me Lord Shax? I am afraid I do not understand your question. I mean, I am a servant of Niru as well now. It seems odd to me that you keep calling me a Lord despite that. Ah, I see. Your current occupation doesn't erase the fact that blood flows through your veins, Lord Shax. If all of us who stand beneath the Master shared the same rank because of that fact, then there wouldn't be any difference between me and any other shapeshifter you might find out there, no, would there? That would be truly heartbreaking. The servant said with a somber voice, although he brought his hand to his chin and jiggled a second after. I guess so. You really care about your job, huh? Why, yes. The master might not be the most cheerful person, but working for him has brought me a great sense of fulfillment. Maybe it doesn't mean as much to me because I'm still young compared to most shapeshifters. But I figure for someone as old as him, having something that gives him fulfillment, as he calls it, must be a pretty huge deal. Hmm. Lord Jax? 
Is something the matter? You are making quite the scary face right now. Uh, am I? Uh, sorry. It wasn't anything you said. I just recall something unpleasant. Let us resume practice. If that is what you wish, first, let's talk about your panicking. Oh boy. Practicing with Sebot wasn't bad at all. I found myself having fun, despite struggling with his lessons. As for Nirus, sometimes we will talk in his study whenever he had a job for me. But every once in a while, when going for a walk outside the house, I will find him taking care of the garden. At those times, I will approach him and try to make a little chat. At first, I struggled to find a conversation topic, since I didn't know much about his personal taste. But one day, I asked him if he had any books he would recommend to me to read in my free time. He listed a couple of titles, and since then, whichever book I was reading became our conversation topic. I like to think he enjoyed our little chats, but I couldn't tell with his expression always being so stiff. But to me, he seemed more awkward than disinterested. At times, he would look annoyed, but eventually I noticed those glares weren't directed at me. Sometimes he would remain silent for minutes, staring at a wall or at a particular flower with a look I couldn't decipher. I started thinking he was, perhaps, somewhat of a hermit and not good with people outside of work. Anyway, the worst part of these days was the wave of anxiety that hit me every time Nirus called me to carry out a job for him. Even if things went smoothly, once I came back I dropped in bed, mentally exhausted. The fear of mixing up my lines losing my balance, or even accidentally smacking somewhat when I tail when doing those dance-like moves haunted me. Thankfully, the last one only happened once. But despite my worries, I can say that this was one of the most treasured periods of my life. It will sometimes get a bit lonely or boring, but in time, I grew to feel warm at the presence of those two, and that was all I needed. Besides, it wasn't like my previous life hadn't come with its fair share of isolation. And now that I'm talking about this, I think it's a good moment to bring up the fearsome thing I noticed soon after I started living there. Namely, the fact the house seemed uninhabited besides the three of us. After my second session of etiquette practice, I realized that I hadn't seen anyone besides Nirus and Sebos yet. So I brought it up to the servant. That is because we are the only ones living here. Before you came, there was the master's former warper as well. And why is that? I would have expected the house of a great shapeshifter to be breathing with life. The master has told me he enjoys the calm and quiet. Perhaps bringing in a big number of people will ruin that for him, hmm? Perhaps. Well, you seem to be handling yourself pretty well, despite being the only servant here. I haven't spotted even a speck of a dust so far. Although the house is pretty dark. <laughs> no need to praise me, Lord Jax. Let us return inside. I must prepare supper. Will you be joining the master again, or would you rather eat in your bedroom? I already told you, I would rather join. One day, when I came back from making a delivery, I was received by Sebos at the entrance. He had news for me. Lord Shucks, I guessed right while you were out. He will be joining us for supper. Make sure you look your best. I thanked him and went upstairs to rest. Then, at the usual time, I descended to the dining hall. When I arrived, Nirus was sitting at his usual spot, at the end of the table. 
On the chair to his right sat the noble. Welcome back, Shax. I suspect Sebos already informed you we have a guest tonight, but allow me to introduce you. This is Baron. He is a shapeshifter noble. And Baron, this is Shax, my new warper. Nice to meet you, boy. Oh, uh, you too, mister. It's a pleasure. With the greetings out of the way, I sat on the chair on Nilus's left and listened to the chatting while we waited for supper to be served. Baron spent a while complaining about bodily needs, subordinates asking for more food and better housing, or getting into trouble from stealing from the mortals. Nirus nodded at his ramblings, his eyes not even focused at the noble. But he soon decided to get to business. They started talking about where they will be spreading the word of God next, and the methods they will use. Much to my dismay, it was for this last topic that Baron directed his attention to me. By the way, Shax, I have heard your family came up with a great way to impart gnosis. Mm. Maybe we could learn something from them. Please, tell me about your time working with them. You were doing that until you arrived here, yeah? There is nothing not worthy I can say about that time. My bro forward at the question, but the noble still looked cheerful. Nero's, for his part, was eyeing me, but remained silent. I hoped the noble would drop the topic and resume his conversation with the great shapeshifter, but he insisted. Nonsense! I know it takes time. But their method warranties a great amount of gnosis. Come on, no need to be shy. The only thing to learn from them is cowardice and treachery. I advise you to look somewhere else if you want to improve your methods. I uttered. This seemed to stun the noble, who gave me a somewhat perplexed look. No, Shax, you shouldn't speak ill of your family. They do a wonderful job, spreading blessings around like that. Wonderful job? Blessings? Please. Do tell me what is so wonderful about luring others into a false sense of security, only to leave them to the slaughterhouse as if they were a herd of sheep? If you want more mortals on your side, perhaps you should focus on trying to gain their grace by helping, rather than resorting to trickery. They already have enough reasons to load us. <laughs> That's a very juvenile way of thinking now. Preferable to thinking as scum. My words had gotten the noble angry as well. His face contracted into a pout and he clenched his fist. Knowing he couldn't touch me, he shot a glance at Nerus, as if asking him to reprimand me. Nerus seemed attentive to our exchange, yet detached. His gaze was sharp as a knife when it fell on me, but not out of anger or disapproval. I looked back at him expectantly, staring to those rings of fire and the darkness within, searching for something that could help me understand him. After a few seconds though, he sighed and looked at Baren. <sighs> I beg you to forgive his behavior. Shax, as a noble yourself, you should know it's unsuitable for you to resort to personal insults. I'm sorry. I lost my temper. On the other hand, you know the reason he is here is because of disagreements with his family, Baron. I expected you to be wise enough to not go prodding at sore spots. Yes, yes, forgive me for that. That aside, I have to agree with Shax that his family methods might not be the right ones to pick up, especially if you are trying to turn into a large-scale operation. If we go down this path, before long the angels will no doubt take notice and interrupt before we can sow our rewards. We need to look for a more sustainable alternative. I see. Yes, I hadn't seen it from that angle. I could have thrown that at that moment, 
Nidu shot a scornful glance at the novel, but it only lasted a fraction of a second. I don't believe the other shapeshifter even noticed. Super arrived shortly after. As we ate, the conversation topic shifted from work to shared acquaintances and the such. Their talk took a dark turn when Baron brought up some shapeshifters that had gone hollow not long ago, but they didn't dwell on the topic for long. After the blunder, I decided to eat my food in silence. I just wanted the night to end so I could go to sleep. Oh, look at the time! My warper is scheduled to come to pick me up pretty much uh, right now. The shapeshifter said after we finished supper. I will tell Sabos to escort you out, then. Thank you for visiting. Yes, yes. Thank you for your hospitality. Let's meet again another time. Nirus nodded and called the servant, who led Baren out of the dining hall. I thought it was a good time for me to sleep away as well. Well then, I'll get go- Just as I was getting off my seat, I felt a huge hand grab me by the shoulder, pinning me back in my place. I looked up and I saw Nirus, who had gotten up from his chair at some point, staring at me without a single blink. Uh, yes? Do not worry too much about today. Nobles can be unpleasant at times. Although, I am certain you have had your fair share of experiences with them, considering your background. Still, do watch your tongue in front of guests. Yes. Again, I'm sorry. I'll be more careful in the future. Good. Mmm. Mmm. Is there something else? Yes. It's about your family. Your father informed me not long ago that you are a second generation soul amnesiac. I see. You do not seem very surprised. <laughs> As if that coward will dare keep that secret from you any longer with me living under your roof. Shax, I just told you... We are not in front of guests right now. Mm. You do not think highly of your family. Tell me, did they bring harm upon you? Is that why you resent them? Nero frowned as he said these last words. I didn't want to feel intimidated, but it was hard not to with his huge hand pinning me to the chair. That said, that wasn't the only response his actions got out of me. I felt a uh, strange and warm tingling rising up from my stomach to my chest. It burned, yet left behind a cold sensation in its wake. An emptiness. Uh, no. They didn't do anything to me in particular. Mm. Oh, may I go now? It would be lovely to talk with you another time, sir, but I'd like to get some breath now. I smile at him. All the tension in his face seemed to dissipate at that moment, and his hand slipped off my shoulder. Just so you know, I got in touch with the doctor that diagnosed you. We are working on adding you to the soul amnesia register now. Alright, sounds good. Hmm. That is all. Have a good night. You too, sir. I exited the dining hall and made my way up to my bedchamber. Yikes. What happened there? Did I do something to upset him, or...? Maybe he was still annoyed at how I talked to the novel, but he didn't seem to care moments ago. Could he have been just concerned about me? I shouldn't have gotten intimidated. Although, his eyes, the way he held me, it didn't feel bad. 
I didn't understand what that simple but forceful act had awakened in me yet. Even so, I was sure of one thing. I wanna try to get closer to him. Hmm. So, that was the beginning of Nidus. So, how did you guys like it? Please tell us in the comment box and tell Nero if you want us to keep reading it. Also, tell us what do you think of Nerus. He's a big buff uh, thing, stuff, shapeshifter, whatever. And about Shax, the little sturdy boy, green and lovable. <laughs> Nerus, is Nerus gonna join the pantheon of big furry wolf boyfriends? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we will see later. If he is worthy. Yeah, only if you tell us to keep going. So. Okay, then... See you guys later. See you in the next episode of Nidos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.